Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. And I had a request from my Instagram subscribers to do a trig sub. So here you go. We have the indefinite integral of the square root of x squared plus 2x dx. So I already gave you the hint that it's going to involve trig sub. Pause the video, try it on your own. I'm going to jump right in. Before we can identify which of the three substitutions is appropriate, we need to complete the square for the expression underneath the radical sign. So x squared plus 2x, in order for it to be a perfect square trinomial, I need to add 1. So I'm also going to subtract 1, that way I didn't do anything illegal, I'm just adding 0. And then now this is a perfect square trinomial, I can rewrite it as the quantity x plus 1 squared minus, and then that's my constant a squared, which is just 1. So when you have a variable quantity squared minus the constant, when the variable quantity comes first, then you use the trig sub that involves secant. So I'm going to let all of that variable quantity, x plus 1, be secant theta. And then now differentiating both sides, we get that dx equals secant theta tan theta d theta. Good? Okay, so back to the integral. Let's rewrite everything all in terms of theta now. If you want to remind yourself really quickly, instead of x squared plus 2x under the radical, now we have x plus 1 quantity squared minus 1 dx, right? Same thing. So then we have integral square root. x plus 1 quantity squared is going to be secant squared theta minus 1. And then instead of dx, what do we have? All this loveliness right here, secant theta, tan theta, d theta. Okay, perfect. Then from here, this is where the beauty of trig sub comes in. You're going to use your Pythagorean identities to rewrite the expression underneath the radical. So we know secant squared theta minus 1, that's tangent squared theta. I have square root of tangent squared theta. Technically, it's absolute value of tan theta, but we always restrict theta so that it's going to be, uh, the trig function will be positive. So you don't have to worry about contending with the absolute value. So we'll have tan theta times secant theta, tan theta, d theta. Perfect. So I can clean this up a wee bit. I can write it as secant theta times tangent squared theta, d theta. And then your mind goes, okay, how shall I proceed? When I see products of secants and tangents, um, I mentally test out my two options for u sub. What are they? U could be secant theta or u could be tan theta. In the first case, if u is secant theta, du would need to be secant theta, tan theta, d theta. And if u is tan theta, du would be secant squared theta, d theta. I don't always write this out, but mentally that's what I'm checking. Okay, so first option. Could I make this work? If u is secant theta, great. Uh-oh, I don't have this du, and there's no way I can squeeze it out of here. So that's not going to work. Uh then next option, if u is tangent theta, okay, I got one of those, du is secant squared theta, no. No, I can't make that happen with one tangent and one secant left over. Uh, so that won't work either. So what do you do? Not cry. No, you go, okay, I still have one more trick up my sleeve. I can rewrite tangent squared theta as secant squared theta minus one. And usually that will save the day. So then distribute now this secant that's sitting outside, and we'll have integral secant cube theta minus secant theta d theta. Okay, here's the exciting part. The antiderivative of secant cube theta, if you don't have it memorized, it's going to be one of those ones that boomerangs. You have to do integration by parts once, and then you use your Pythagorean identity to get it to boomerang. If you've never seen it before, I recommend you watch where I derive it in my lecture video. I'll link that lecture video in the description, okay? It's on the trig integrals. I recommend, if you're going to be integrating for a while as a student, <laughs> that you just memorize it. And actually, one of my subscribers here on YouTube gave a great little way to help remember the antiderivative of secant cubed. And it's the following. It is, let me write this down so it stays in your head. This antiderivative is the average of the derivative and 
antiderivative of secant theta. Okay, so average of two things means we would add them together, divide by two. So we're going to have a one half times the derivative and antiderivative of secant theta. So the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tan theta. I'm averaging it out, so I'm going to add it to the antiderivative of secant theta is ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta. I think this is like the slickest way to really remember it. And it will come up enough if you're going to continue in Calc 2, 3, differential equations. I would just memorize it. Okay, so we've got antiderivative for secant cubed all right here. And then I have minus antiderivative of secant theta. Well, we just wrote it down. It's ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta. And then now we need to put plus c for our answer. Okay, let's come through. Do you notice we can combine like terms because this is one half positive ln secant theta plus tan theta and then I have negative one of the same term. So then I'll have one half secant theta tan theta positive one half minus one is minus one half ln absolute value secant theta plus tan theta plus c. And then no, don't box this answer. I know it's beautiful, we're so, so proud, but actually it's triangle time. We gotta go back to our original variable, which is x. So how do we do that? Well, think back, what was our original substitution? We let x plus one equal secant theta. So remember, that's x plus one over one. So you draw yourself a cute little triangle, put a 90 degree angle somewhere, here's theta. Secant theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. Using the Pythagorean theorem, the missing side is x plus 1 quantity squared minus 1, which we know is x squared plus 2x from the original integral. No surprise. Okay, then use your triangle. So 1 half, this secant theta, I mean, I could look at the triangle or I could just say, oh, it's x plus 1. Tan theta is going to be the ratio of opposite over adjacent side. So that's square root x squared plus 2x minus 1 half ln. And then we have absolute value. I ran out of space, please forgive. Of x plus 1 plus square root x squared plus 2x. Close it up. Plus c. And voila, we are done. Now we can box this with pride. That was a job well done. I would say this is definitely like medium level trig sub problem. Okay, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you solved it differently. I have to go back. I would give credit to whoever told me about that way to remember antiderivative of secant cube, but I don't remember who it was. But if it was you, say so in the comments. And um, yeah, share your solutions. Let me know in the comments if you've already memorized antiderivative of secant cubed or not. How do you feel about it? And if you need to review any of the integration techniques or other topics in Calc, check out the playlist that I have on my YouTube channel. Everything's organized by course. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thanks so much for your support, you guys. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Did I say that already? I don't know. Share it with a friend, share it with a neighbor, share it with your barista. And I'll be coming back with more content soon. So stay tuned. Bye.